Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. I bring you guys a brand new video today, and today we are jumping into the world of Pokemon Unite with a new tier list reflecting the changes to the metagame with the addition of Sylveon, the newest attacker in Pokemon Unite. Now, if you haven't seen our other tier list videos, we break down every single hero, give our reasoning, and I don't do these by my own. I'm actually joined by two of my esports team members, Heat and Feppy. What's going on, Heat? Yo, what's up? What's up, what's up? We've got Feppy on the call, our support player. Uh, I'm excited. I don't like Sylveon, but we'll explain why in a bit. <laughs> yeah, so we have three perspectives for this video, which also gives us a little bit more kind of understanding. We can discuss the Pokemon a little bit better, have three people to vote on where we rank the Pokemon. And as per your suggestions, we have actually broken out the tiers. So instead of just having S, A, B, and C, we now have S, A plus A, B plus B, and C plus. So that'll hopefully give you guys a little bit better of an understanding. Our perspective for this video is in high level competitive play. For those that don't know, we're all ranked to the top 500. Many of us are in top 200 ranking right now in ELO. Um, and we've been competing in tournaments and ranking pretty high in those tournaments as well. So I think we've got some pretty good perspective on the competitive metagame and how things are gonna shake out. So that's gonna be our perspective. As always, any of these Pokemon can function. You can use the worst Pokemon of the game and have success with it, so don't get personally offended about it. Uh, you may think that, you know, Gardevoir is amazing, but the reality of it is no one's playing Gardevoir at a high level or in high level competitive play right now, so that's just kind of the facts. If you enjoy this, be sure to hit that like button down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And uh, you can check out Heat and Feppy in the description below. And before I go any further, I think it's only fair that I promo the brand new Team Shawnee Esports t-shirt, which uh, is a representation of our brand new Esports team. We've got some really cool stuff brewing for Team Shawnee. So you guys can head over to TeamShawnee.com and pick up this limited edition Team Shawnee Esports t-shirt, which is gonna be available on the 7th, today the video, uh, the day the video goes out at noon. So it's gonna be available in about an hour from recording this, but it'll be available by the time the video goes up. So pick up this awesome eSports t-shirt right now from Team Shiny. Without further ado, let's start ranking some Pokemon. You guys ready to rock? Let's go. Let's get it, let's get it. All right, first things first, Snorlax baby. Snorlax has been one of the premier defenders since launch. Incredible power from an early game perspective. A lot of sustainability, obviously, with its Unite move. And of course, Block is just such an incredible utility. Being able to basically hold opponents off objectives, push them towards the team, do all sorts of fun stuff. Now that we've broken this all out, do you guys think that Snorlax falls into the A plus tier or into the A tier? I'm feeling like it's probably somewhere in there. Yeah, I agree. Um, I would err on the side of A, just because we'll probably see another tank hit A plus that you would pick in that slot if not then yeah i think a plus is also viable i mean many top teams use him in the tank slot he's got great smiting early he's got great presence late uh both are justified i think just how many mons we have to get through puts him in a tier yeah i think so too i just want to ask chat as well is the audio levels good for feppy and heat i just tweaked it a little bit it should be much better now um from where it was so um we'll keep it rocking but we'll put snorlax in a tier to start this off and i'll have heat talk about cinderace Ooh, I, I still think Cinderace is uh, a tier. Cinderace is a really good counter to the the current tank meta. Um, it, it shreds through tanks. It does a lot of damage to Venusaur, and Venusaur is a really strong mon. We'll get to that later. I think A is a very fair spot. Uh, it is mostly used as a counter pick. We used it as a counter pick in flex in tournament and had great success with it. So I, I like Cinder a lot. I think A tier is fair. All right, moving on. Feppy, I know you're a big Mime fan, but Mime, which we recently put in A tier. Uh, definitely does not play against Sylveon super well. What are your thoughts on Mime? Yeah, Mime at him is definitely B plus or B now. The problem with Mime is that he's a special attacking tank and Sylveon likes to reduce special attack and it really lowers a lot of the value that Mr. Mime gives. It's really unfortunate, but and also on top of that, a lot of the meta is based around high mobility and Mime struggles in the high mobility, especially with a lot of dashes. Because if my, Mr. Mime places a barrier down, you just dash away from it and he can't stun you anymore. Yeah, I think that that's probably the, the biggest takeaway that I had from playing against Sylveon yesterday um, with Mime or seeing Sylveon and Mime interact is it's dashing. Uh, obviously the special attack drops are huge with Mystical Fire, but Sylveon's ability to kind of get in and out of an engagement uh, makes it so Mime really struggles. So. I do feel like while he uh, has taken a huge, like Mime has been very much so a presence in the three bottom lane strategy, 
I think we're going to see a shift away from that, especially with the addition of Sylveon. It's just really hard to justify. You know you're going to run Lucario most of the time top. You know you're going to put Talonflame, Venusaur, Sylveon, Jungle. And you know in, in the bottom lane, you're, you're most likely going to have your support uh, as well as Sylveon or Venusaur. And it's just really hard to fit Mime into that composition right now with, with kind of everything going on. So it uh, definitely takes a little bit of a, a, little bit of a knock there. Uh, moving forward, we've got Talonflame. Talonflame, one of the Pokemon that received the most buffs, actually sports the highest attack stat in the game, has an incredible smite with fly. Very, very powerful. Really solid Unite move that can just move enemies off the objective. Uh, very strong jungler. However, it now has a little bit more competition for the jungle slot because of Sylveon, but still a very, very premier Pokemon right now. I'm leaning towards A plus tier. Um, I, that's kind of where I'm feeling. I don't. I don't think it hits S tier. I'm thinking A plus. Do you? Would you say it's a notch above Cinderace right now? Yeah, I think so. I think you pick Talon above Cinderace, and I think specifically, I know you're you're going to realize that there's a lot of these discussions that are going around Sylveon being in the game because Sylveon is very strong, and we'll get there. But Sylveon doesn't have great smiting and objectives, and the fact that uh, Talon Flame brings that pressure makes it a really good counter pick against Sylveon if your team's not running a Sylveon. Yeah, as long as it's not dashing away from those flies, that's for sure. Um, yeah. Why don't we why don't we actually shift gears and talk a little bit uh, support here? Um, Fabi, why don't you give me your thoughts on Blissey right now, which is very interesting. Yeah, well, one of the big upsides to Blissey has always been her ability to pocket a single target. And, and actually, Sylveon is a very, very strong target to pocket. Uh, Blissey is probably A+, plus because Blissey's ability to pocket people is just really really strong right now and it ultimately is just going to come down to whether or not you want to pocket a single target or you want to speed boost your team and shield your entire team in comparison to Eldegoss. So in, in all honesty if you want to go ahead and pick LD right now and just put him in A tier as A plus tier as well. Both of these healers are very very strong. They just do different things. It's just which one do you want? That's very fair. So our support player actually ranks both Eldegoss and Blissey in A plus tier as just being top uh, support Pokemon and really uh, circumstantial, really depending on the team composition, what you're trying to do with it, you can really mix and match both of them and, and kind of make them fit uh, pretty well. So uh, we'll move towards uh, Lucario. He, why don't you give me your thoughts on Lucario? Yeah, sure. I still think Lucario is S tier. I still think he's probably one of the best split pushers in the game, if not the best. He's very, very strong early. He's really good at counter jungling, which into a Sylveon meta is probably going to end up being desirable as the meta evolves. Um, I think that, I mean, there's no argument against him being S tier. He hasn't got any nerfs or anything, and he's still just the powerhouse he used to be. So yeah, easy pick. Yeah, I think that that's fair. Uh, moving forward, we'll talk Gardevoir. Gardevoir, <laughs> we were arguing of whether or not we should have a Gardevoir tier uh, under C+, but I think Gardevoir safely continues its slot as one of the worst Pokemon of the game right now. Uh, its early game lane phase is absolutely detrimental. I mean, it's very, very difficult to get that uh, Rolts to really do anything. While it does have incredible damage output once it gets to level 10 uh, and it gets its full evolution, it simply struggles too much in the early game and there's just simply better Pokemon to play on your team than Gardevoir. It's so hard to fit it into your team composition. And now with the addition of Sylveon, you've got a Pokemon that can lower special attack very effectively, can get away from those burst uh, attacks that, that Gardevoir is looking to do. And you also have another Pokemon competing for that jungle slot, which further pushes Gardevoir down the ranks. Sylveon does not do Gardevoir any favors. And I, I just, I can't simply say in a high level game, there's any reason to pick Gardevoir right now. Agreed. Yeah, it's just it's just the unfortunate reality that again that doesn't mean you can't do well with Gardevoir. It's just that it's, it just simply does not stand up to the rest of the Pokemon right now. Uh, Feppy, what do you think about Charizard, the all arounder? Uh, I think Charizard's still pretty strong. Uh, actually, he's a very interesting counter pick, and specifically Sylveon because he's a physical attacker and also can just run the Sylveon down. Sylveon can knock it away. Charizard, especially when he's ulting. I still think he's an A-tier hero. He's very, very strong. His early game is a bit weak, but his late game is extremely good, especially into characters like Sylveon now. And so he's still strong at what he does. He's still strong into characters like Sylveon, like Cinderace, like Greninja. If you're looking to counterpick sort of that ADC carry role, Charizard's your pick. I would argue B+. What do you think, Heat? Yeah, I would have I would have said B plus as well. I still think you take Cinder over Charizard in that situation, right? I think Cinder's a bit more of a powerhouse. I definitely think you take Talonflame over Charizard, um, and he's got a lot more competition for the slot he's in, right? Because now you can run Sylveon Jungle as well. 
Venusaur can go jungle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's just how I see it at this point. I think B plus is fair. Fair enough. Moving forward, we've got Crustal the Defender. Crustal functions as a split pusher right now, where you can kind of secure objectives and play an off lane. Uh, the thing is, there's Pokemon that kind of run that role a little bit better with Lucario and Zeraora, both able to kind of solo top lane themselves. Crustle cannot solo a lane, and while he does have really good early game secure, some incredible mobility, and the ability to function on a team, I can tell you as someone who's got over 600 games on Crustle, I just can't justify putting him on a team right now where I just feel like there's other, other better Pokemon that you can use. He definitely has a niche, but in a three bottom meta game, I just don't feel like he adds enough value. So I'm kind of, I'm feeling that he goes into B tier right now. Any, any thoughts guys? <laughs> um, yeah, I think B or B plus is fair. I mean, we still see the Japanese teams have a lot of success with Crustle, Rollout Wiggly, right? I think in that comp, he has a place and in that strat, he makes sense and they'll beat a lot of teams with that strat. Um, but if you're not running a, a true goal scoring strat where you're just, you know, bum rushing points to get goals down to, to win the game by way of point deduction slash point wins, then he's not that great. I think B or B plus is fair. I'd put him B plus personally. Yeah, you know, after you mentioned that, I think that that's actually a really good evaluation. There are there are specific comps in which Crustal shines, and those are the comps that, as you mentioned, that are really focused heavily on scoring and and even less on the objectives. And it's essential in those compositions. So while it's not typical to kind of what we normally see, there is a there is a more niche place for him, uh, more so than a lot of other other Pokemon. So I think actually I'll I'll adjust that. I'll go with you. I think B plus is fair on that. Um, Let's, why don't you, uh, he, why don't you talk a little bit about Greninja right now, the other uh, ADC? Yeah, I think uh, Greninja and Cinder are both ex like interchangeable picks. I think they're both really good. I think Greninja is better against Squishies and Cinder is better against Tanks, obviously. But I don't think Greninja is as nerfed as we initially thought he was. I probably still put him in A tier. I think uh, you can still have a lot of success with Greninja. He outputs a ton of damage. He can just hard win games by himself. He still has the ability to put out 160k damage in a ranked masters game so he's definitely not uh, a bad pick i think there are picks that come before him but i think uh, the tier list represented properly would put him in a tier yeah i would tend to agree with that uh moving forward uh febby why don't you give me your thoughts on wigglytuff which is a support not a defender despite the green background yeah i still think uh wiggly is a pretty good alternative to Snorlax. If you're looking for a less consistent tank with a much stronger ultimate, Wiggly is still very, very good for that role. Uh, it's still pretty good at countering characters that have a lot of mobility with the Q Charm passive. So it's actually surprisingly good into characters like, you know, Sylveon, for example. So I still think Wiggly is an A tier character right now. The ultimate is just completely insane. Yeah, and he does get that Unite move uh, pretty early, obviously level eight. So even as a Pokemon that uh, you know generally will lag behind in XP, lost a little bit of its offensive power and its early game abilities, uh, it still gets its sing at level four, and that's just really powerful. So uh, Willie Tub's still a really strong Pokemon, and, and Cute Charm is just really, really annoying. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. It's very, very annoying. Um, I'll talk to Venusaur actually next. Uh, Venusaur has kind of taken the metagame by storm with Petal Dance and Giga Drain. Giga Drain re uh, reducing the amount of damage he takes and Petal Dance obviously having that incredible cooldown on Giga Drain. The Solar Beam Sludge Bomb set has definitely taken a back seat to where Venusaur is. And Venusaur, I believe in the last tier list, we had it at S tier. Now, it's very interesting because now that Sylveon has been added to the metagame, Sil uh, Venusaur's effectiveness against those Mystical Fires and those massive special attack drops has definitely dropped a little bit. I would still make the argument that Venusaur is S tier. However, I do think there's an argument to be made for A plus tier. I'll let you guys weigh in. Uh, I think, yeah, Venusaur is pretty much undeniably S tier. Um, if Sylveon's not jungling, Venusaur should be. Uh, and then if Sylveon is jungling, Venusaur is in the bot lane right now. So, I mean, easy pick for me. I think S tier is pretty much the only place he can live. Yeah, would you agree, Feppy? Yeah, the, the two characters are fairly interchangeable. You can run both of them and either the bot lane slot or you can run them both in the jungle slot and they're very very successful the only like venu kind of gets countered by sylveon but venu's presence is just so oppressive in fights that it just doesn't matter yeah it's you're almost at a disadvantage at this point right now when you when you don't have it it's so strong um let's talk to uh he why don't you give me your perspective on machamp Ooh, Machamp is in a rough spot right now. I don't necessarily think he's bad. I just think so many Mons do what he does better than he does. 
I think, I mean, obviously Charizard does it better. I think Sylveon does it better. I think Lucario does it better. Like in terms of rushing in, doing a bunch of damage and still managing to survive, I think he's probably B tier. He's our first entry in B tier right now. I just don't see you picking him over any of the Mons in his slot above him. I think that's fair. I think that's very fair. So we'll put him in B tier for now. Uh, talking next is, uh, we've got Mammoth Swine up next. I can tell you that I, I've actually grown to love Mammoth Swine. I've got about 100 games on him now. I've basically exclusively been playing him since his launch. And he's got really good early game, uh, surprisingly, right? He's got Tackle, Ice Shard, very strong for clearing objectives and, and getting the last hit. Um, he can deal quite a bit of damage out in terms of its stuns. Like, his Earthquake is really nice. I, I've actually kind of fallen in, in more in love with Icicle Crash. But the reality of it is, I don't think he's at the same level as running something like a Snorlax right now. Um, I'm feeling like he probably falls into B plus tier. I think that there is a, a world where Mammoth Swine is really good. I do think there's a composition where it's really good. And I think, and leading an engagement and kind of being that frontline tank, he can definitely do that. I just can't say that I think he's as good as Snorlax. I feel like Snorlax's early game is too strong. And I feel like Block is such a unique ability that sets Snorlax so much beyond. It's, it's gonna be really hard for a defender to, to leap over Snorlax in my mind. Uh, with the exception of Blastoise, which I mean, who knows if that's even a defender. I'm feeling like Mammo falls in a B plus tier though. Yeah, I think B plus is fair. I mean, we've been running the Mammo on with you on the Snorlax slot interchangeably. I think you'd probably take the Mammo over the Mime if I'm not mistaken. So I think B plus is totally fair. Yeah, it, it's funny. Well, I actually talked to this last weekend. We played in a tournament and uh, I ran Mime the entire time in a three bot. And we had, you know, good success. We got to the top four. And then in our third place match, uh, we switched it up. I decided to run Mammoth Swine instead of Mime, and, and we played against a, a very, very established team, and we played so much better running the Mammoth Swine over the Mime. That that could be a representation of, of my play, but also just the composition in general. So I do think there is a place for Mammoth Swine right now in a three-bottom strategy. Um, when you're behind, it can struggle a lot, though, because getting to 10 can feel like this giant mountain to climb, but once you're 10, he starts to really be able to uh, to do some work and, and kind of engage very strong. He kind of spikes at eight once he gets Earthquake. He's, he's in such a weird spot, right? He's got a super good early game, falls off mid game, and then kind of comes back around towards the end game. But even so, it's it's still pretty awkward. Um, Febby, why don't you give me your thoughts on Cramorant? Uh, Cramorant's still a pretty decent option. His ultimate nerf actually didn't hit as hard as I think a lot of people were expecting. It wasn't nearly as bad as people thought. His uh, pick potential is still really good. He's used in every single pick-oriented comp, right? His surf is still really strong. His hurricane is really strong. He's actually starting to see some use as well as a, uh, a ranged carry now with air slash dive as well. I think he's a very solid, flexible pick, and there's an argument whether it's B plus or A, but he's a pretty solid pick right now. You, you, I, if I see a cram on my team, I'll never be upset. Yeah, I think just based on how many top teams are running him right now and running him with really good success, I think A tier is super fair. I would agree with that. I think his Unite move is just so strong. Um, he probably has one of the best Unite moves in the game in terms of kind of zoning off objectives, so being able to you know force an entire team to basically run away from his ult uh, that that's incredible. You know, uh, I don't know if there's any other Pokemon of the game that ha quite has that same effectiveness outside of maybe Blastoise. Uh, very, very strong pick. Um, up next, I'll talk to Pikachu. Uh, I will say the addition of items like Choice Specs really help Pikachu. It really helps his damage. Uh, he can actually deal quite a bit of damage now, and he's got a really good early lane phase with Electro Web and Electro Ball at level four. Um, I run a lot of Pikachu, and I think it's a, a really strong pick when you're ahead, but... <laughs> He's so bad when you're behind. And I know you could say that for a lot of Pokemon, but I feel like with Pikachu, you can feel it so much more than a lot of Pokemon. And again, I, I play Pikachu extensively. I personally think that at this stage of the game, I can't justifiably put him any higher than B tier. I feel like his Unite move feels like you're, you're basically throwing like wet paper bags at the opposing Pokemon because of Buddy Barrier and the strength of Buddy Barrier right now. Um, again, he has his strengths, but he falls off so much late game because of all the other Pokemon getting their Unite moves, all the other Pokemon running those Buddy Barriers, all those other Pokemon getting their big power spikes mid to late game. I just don't feel like Pikachu can compete. Um, it's a great Pokemon. I, I really like using it, but I just don't think it's strong enough to compete right now. Any any thoughts on that? <laughs> um, no, you, no, that's entirely right. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, 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 he just struggles in the late game. He, has, he doesn't get a massive power spike other than Electro Ball and 
That's not the greatest of power spikes. Yeah, I would have made an argument for C+. I think you're being generous, but yeah, I, I think this is fair. I think if you're ahead, Pikachu's pretty good. I think if you're behind, Pikachu is like more useless than Gardevoir or on the same level. So. Yeah, oh, very, very much of a struggle. Uh, Feppy, give me your thoughts on Slowbro. We'll pad the, the lower tiers here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Slowbro still has the same problem. He doesn't really do any damage. He can't capitalize on his survivability. I, the only thing he's useful for is niche telekinesis strats and his ultimate. He's still C+. He can be picked, but you have to be in a 5 stack that knows how to play with him. That's the only way you're getting value. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the, the mention of telekinesis is, is really the one thing that can set him apart. Uh, very coordinated play. Um, allows Slowbro to do some things, but his nerf to Surf really, really set him back. Um, a few patches ago, they, they changed the amount of stuns that Surf did, and that really made it so Slowbro just cannot compete at this stage of the game, especially when you could have a Snorlax or a Wiggly, um, you know, or another supporter instead of a, a defender. It's just very hard to justify uh, Slowbro right now. So um, we'll, we'll put him in C plus tier so Gardevoir is not lonely, and I'll let Heat talk to one of his mains. We've got Zeraora up next. Oh, I love Zeraora. I think uh, Zeraora is really strong. It's a really good counter pick to Lucario. There is a point to be made that uh, if Zeraora is not 8 for Dread, it's somewhat useless in a Dread fight. Like, you just kind of walk in and try to do as much damage as possible. But uh, Zeraora post 8 is really strong. I think he scales really, really well into the late game. I would probably put him in a plus tier. I think he's a, a good pick choice other than Lucario and probably your next best pick choice for solo lane. Uh, he 1v1s the Lucario even without Discharge, so he can hold the solo lane really well. I just think uh, in early game team fights, he's not as strong as Lucario is. I think that's fair, and I think his 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 ability to secure an objective, um, oftentimes you, you're looking at Zeraora and, and, and Lucario are playing a similar role right now in a composition, being the off laner, solo laner. Uh, so when you look at what Lucario can do to secure objectives, you just simply can't put them in the same, same category. Although... You can make the very fair argument that Zeraora's late game is much stronger because of his Unite move, whereas Lucario's is is a lot of times useless. So um, I think A-plus tier coming from uh, Zeraora main uh, is very, very fair there. Uh, Feppy, I'll let you talk to Blastoise, uh, the defender that, that's not much of a defender. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's a quote-unquote defender, yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's a very, very strong uh, option if you need a damage dealer. Um, he's gotta be a plus his unite's incredibly strong he's falling off a little bit right now because of the nerf to water spell but hydro pump is still very strong and he's actually getting a niche uh he's getting a niche uh, part of the meta now where he can play top lane with surf against the lucario and he loses the matchup but his unite can just win fights so he's still very very strong but he's just not venusaur and lucario I think that's fair. I think the biggest thing is, and we've talked about this in the past, Blastoise is a Pokemon that you can run with just his Unite move and nothing else, and it's still going to be a viable Pokemon because his Unite move is so strong at team fights and securing objectives. It's one of the best in the game, and it's so funny because I remember back when I did my initial take on Blastoise before it was released, and I was like, what is his Unite move? He just spins around, and it turns out to be one of the most destructive moves in the game. Uh, no doubt about it. He, what do you think about Ninetales? All the Ninetales. We know it with its new skin, it's definitely S tier, but without the skin, what do you think? Yeah, the new skin is really nice. Uh, no arguments there. I think Ninetales is in a really weird spot right now. I think most of the mons in this game can just run Ninetales down, especially with the addition of Sylveon giving rundown extra capability, right? Like, Ninetales can't get away from Blastoise, can't get away from Lucario or Zera or Talonflame. I think Ninetales is maybe B plus tier. Um, I I'm thinking like bottom of A, but because we have a B plus, I'm more inclined to put her there. I don't think you pick her over any of the other carries in the bot lane, be it Sylveon, Venusaur, etc., Or Cram, for example. So I think B plus is fair. Any thoughts, Feppy? Yeah, B plus. Ninetales has a crazy good early game for a ranged attacker and is a pretty strong late game character, but the biggest downside is that you can just run over the character because it has no mobility. Yeah, and I think the addition of Sylveon having so much mobility definitely sets uh, Ninetales back a little bit. Um, moving forward, we'll talk to Gengar. Uh, Gengar still has quite a bit of usability in terms of uh, the fact that he has two really cool kits, the Hex Sledge Bomb set as well as the, the Shadow Ball Dream Eater set. And if we talk Hollow Wear, he's got one of the best in the game. There's no doubt about that. Um, but the reality of it is 
running Gengar in lane is is not the most advisable strategy. There there is a world where he runs in a three bot strat, um, where he can kind of be supported by a team. Uh, it's really hard to justify running Gengar right now in jungle because there's just so many better junglers. Don't get me wrong, a Gengar that's ahead on a, in the hands of a good player can certainly melt still. But when you can pick Talonflame, or you can pick Sylveon, or you can pick Venusaur, it's so hard to say that Gengar stands above those heroes and that you have a, a legitimate reason to pick them over Gengar right now. So for that reason, I, I feel like Gengar falls into probably the B plus tier. Um, while I know it can be destructive, I just don't think you pick him over the other characters. What do you guys think? I, I would make an argument for B tier because there's just so many junglers above him. I think you take Charizard, Greninja, Cinder, Talon, even Zara, Blastoise, Venu, and you know any of those junglers, Sylveon above him. So I, I would make a point for B tier. Um, I think he still has the potential to do a lot of damage. I think now that you know Mons with more mobility are being added to the game, like let's say Gengar's against a Sylveon, it makes it really hard for Gengar to actually land, land anything and keep his Sludge Bomb Hex and or his Dream Eaters alive because he's not really able to land the skill shots. Just due to the mobility, uh, I would I would vote for B tier. Fappy, you get to be the deciding factor, B plus or B. Yeah, definitely B tier. You can't have like nine junglers that are better than you in your role before you can uh, <laughs> and call yourself a B plus tier, in my opinion. That's and also, the, like his his weak his biggest problem is that his early game is really bad. And if his early game was good, like Lick is fine, but. Will O Wisp is just not a good move in lane. If his early game was fine, you could run him in lane. But his early game is really bad. So you can't run him in lane, you can't run him in jungle. It's the only thing that's saving him is that he's better than Gardevoir. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, Febby, what do you think about Garchomp right now, the all-arounder? Uh, Garchomp's weird. Garchomp wants to split push for most of the game and get over leveled, but the problem is is that he just gets dealt with by Lucario, he gets dealt with by Blastoise, gets dealt with by Zorora. Like most characters just counter or slash check Garchomp in the offlane. And on top of that, his presence in team fights is kind of mixed. His ultimate's good in team fights, but he's pretty easy to manage outside of his ultimate. So I I don't think he's I, I think he's either B or C plus. He's just not picked. There's no reason to pick him right now when you could pick something else. Any thoughts, Heat? Yeah, I think C plus is fair. I mean, I think there's so many better options in that solo lane than, than Garchomp. I think Garchomp outside of a 2-1-2 isn't fantastic, and because of the 1-1-3 meta, you just never really see him. I, I think C plus is fair. Yeah. Uh, Heat, what do you think about Absol? I actually think Absol is better than Gengar as a jungle option right now. Specifically into Sylveon, Absol can explode a Sylveon in the right circumstance. Absol has a lot of early game pressure, very similar to how Sylveon does. I think Absol has better smiting than Sylveon does. Obviously, Sylveon's a better mod. I'm not trying to say you pick Absol over it. I'm just saying it has a lot of uh, viability. I'd probably put Absol into the B plus range. I think that's fair. I think Absol has a, a place in, in, in a lot of the different spots. It's hard right now to run him in jungle because of the other Pokemon that can play that role better. Um, but he does have incredible burst damage, some of the highest in the game if you're able to get those critical hits. And the addition of Razor Claw has only helped him there. So I think that's very fair for Absol. Can definitely be a, a solid pick. Um, and then last, and, and and but certainly not least, is the newest hero, Sylveon. The newest Pokemon, Sylveon, which was just recently added to the metagame and has shaken things up. And it's so funny reading the comments of people saying that they don't think that he'll, Sylveon is overpowered or or all that good in general, but uh, I think it's a safe safe uh, assessment here that Sylveon is one of the premier Pokemon of the game. I think you, if you don't want to argue it's the best Pokemon of the game, I think you definitely make an argument that it's one of the top three. Uh, it's got incredible mobility with, with Mystical Fire. It's got the ability to boost its own stats. It's passive boosts its own stats. Uh, it can jungle. It can function in a three-bot three lane. Um, it, it gets its move, Hyper Voice or Mystical Fire, at level four, which is insane upon evolution. It gets an early Unite move at level eight, which is incredibly powerful in the metagame. The only Pokemon that's an offensive Pokemon that gets a Unite move at level eight, which allows you to almost guarantee your Unite move for the first uh, Dreadnought. And while uh, its Unite move isn't all that overwhelming, um, its, its damage output and its ability to kind of weave in and out of battle is absolutely incredible. I think there's no debate in my mind that this is S tier. What do you guys think? 
Yep, I agree with that. I think uh, Sylveon is a meta-changing mon in and of itself. I think we've been, you know, referencing all these other mons to Sylveon and how they handle Sylveon just because Sylveon is such a problem. Um, I, I think Sylveon can be played pretty much in any slot because Sylveon just needs to hit four and it's suddenly useful. I think Mystical Fire is probably the better move set, and that's kind of what we're basing all this off of. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm erring on the side of hard agreeing. If there was an S plus tier, we'd probably put Sylveon there. Yeah, we. I, would you guys say? And I'll let Feppy chime in. Would you think? Would you say that Sylveon is the best Pokemon in the game right now? Debatable. I think Lucario and Sylveon are probably tied right now. They do slightly different no, things. No, I don't think the, so. The thing, the thing is, is that both of these heroes are really, really strong. Both Lucario and Sylveon. Sylveon can be played anywhere. Lucario can be played anywhere and do whatever you want. Right. They both have the potential to just completely take over games, whether it's E-Speed Lucario or it's uh, Mystical Fire uh, Sylveon from Jungle. They're both incredibly strong. I, I agree with what he's saying. I just think Sylveon's a cut above. I think, I mean, we, we, we made it to third in the tournament and second in the tournament. I'm pretty sure not picking Lucario at all. And uh, I, I think if you enter a tournament right now and don't pick Sylveon, you're trolling. I think it's one of those. Yeah, true. Yeah, I think that that's a good summary for that with Sylveon. If you are not playing Sylveon on your team, you're most likely trolling because it is that good. And it's going to be interesting to see uh, if there's any tweaks to Sylveon. I, I think they're going to let it ride. I don't think they're going to tweak it, but I do worry about a power creep. I know some people have, have I've read, read some comments and people are like, don't nerf Sylveon, just bring other Pokemon up to its level. Let's not do that. Uh, let's not power creep the entire game. Um, I, I personally think that a very simple change to Sylveon, which doesn't ruin Sylveon, is simply just adjust its cooldowns. Just increase its cooldowns a little bit. It, it gets its moves so fast. Just increase those cooldowns a little bit, and I think you have a relatively salt, like you'll have a, a, a top tier hero that's not absolutely busted. Um, the fact that he gets his hyper voice and his mystical fire so incredibly fast, uh, that it just allows him to deal just stupid amounts of damage. Um, I think if you tweet that, I think you, you put yourself in a much safer situation for the rest of the game but overall these are the heroes or the pokemon we call them heroes because you know kind of just referencing other games but these are the pokemon and where we think they stand right now in terms of the current pokemon unite metagame obviously things are always subject to change with patch patch updates and new pokemon being introduced but it's safe to say that sylveon has certainly shaken things up and is uh, one of the premier Pokemon in the game right now. Again, if you're not picking Sylveon, you're most certainly throwing. I want to thank Heat and Feppy, Team Shiny Esports members, for joining us today for this awesome tier breakdown. And uh, I appreciate everyone watching this tier list update. If you guys want to show some love, hit that like button down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Feel free to chime in in the comments section below and give your perspective. If you agree, disagree, whatever, you hate me because you think Gardevoir is the best Pokemon of the game, whatever it may be, let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to head over to TeamShawnee.com to pick up our brand new Team Shawnee Esports t-shirt representing Team Shawnee, of course, and our esports team. We played in two tournaments so far. We came in second place out of, or second place out of 68 teams and we came in third place in an Invitational, so we've made a pretty good showing so far. We're excited to keep practicing and keep improving to bring you guys amazing esports Pokemon Unite content. Thank you to Heat and Feppy one more time for joining us. You can check their links in the description. Thank you to the A Drive Army for watching. That's gonna be it for me, guys. My name is Dan. I also go by A Drive, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.